Mike Woodson's job at Indiana is on the line if he does not crush it in the transfer portal. Now let me tell you why. You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in. It is the Locked On Hoosiers podcast. I'm your man, Jacob Goetz. Appreciate you being here. Glad to have you back for another week. Shout out to all of you everydayers. Those are the ones of you that come back each and every day and make this your first listen each and every day, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, which is your team every day. Today's episode of Locked On Hoosiers is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. Hey, if you're on the YouTube version, like the video, it shares it out, send it to your family and friends that wear the Hoosier colors and also hit that subscribe button. We're so close to 2100. We just blew on past 2000. We're going for 21. And then, yeah, you guessed it, 22 and beyond. So if you haven't done that, become part of this family. We're having a lot of fun over here as well. Mike Woodson's job is on the line right now, not even when the season starts. I'm talking right now here in Bloomington if he does not crush it in the transfer portal. And the reasonings are pretty simple. We'll talk about that today, plus some news on the Indiana women's basketball side where maybe lost her coach, but not so fast, Tennessee, more and maybe sticking around. And then I know we don't want to see it. I know we may not want to hear it. But we do have a national championship game tonight, and we have some insight with one of the teams. So we get to play about and talk about that, I should say, today as well. So that's coming up on Locked on Hoosiers. Mike Woodson's job is up for grabs. It's on the line. Right now, in April, he has to crush it in the transfer portal. And we have talked about tons and tons and tons of names that Indiana has reached out to, that they're going to be bringing on visits once the dead period's over, and that they hope to bring in for whether it be one year, two years, three years, however long, they're looking to bring guys in through the transfer portal. And the reason that his job is up for grabs right now is because what he has done up to this point hasn't worked. It hasn't worked at all, right? High school recruiting was abysmal. The one guy you brought in signed, and then he left after you were announced that the head coach was sticking around. Little fishy, little odd, but it is what it is. So he's gone, and basically by a little luck, and maybe to the man upstairs if you believe in that, you were able to bring in another high school recruit because the G League and the other league that he was going to go play in got shut down, got banished, doesn't even exist anymore. And then you were able to bring him in after that. This team needs help. This team needs help right now. And they need tons of it, right? With the guard spot and the center, and you need another forward. You need guys to come off the bench. You need options. We need options on this team, something we did not have a year ago. It was our five against your five, and I hope you don't have anybody else on the bench because we got nothing for you. And if our five don't get it done, well, we're SOL. And that's how the season ran last year. Guess what? That's not going to work again this year, right? Because it didn't work last year. And Mike Woodson almost lost his job over it. A lot of you wanted him to lose his job, and I think a lot of you still probably do, but he's here for another season. But you cannot repeat what you did a year ago, the systems that you ran, the plays that you ran, the lack of development in this program was was shocking and, and really frightening to me. All of those things have to change right now. And I think if you crush it in the transfer portal by going and getting four, five, six guys that could come in and be those instant impact players that we talk about all the time, I think that can help you. That could save his job. I'm serious. That could save his job. And the good thing about the portal players, especially those ones that only have a year or two left of eligibility, you don't have to teach them and train them and and have them learn a lot of things about the college game. They should already know. And if they don't, 
I suggest we don't bring them in here. But when you're bringing those guys in, you're teaching them more on your system, how we do things. Okay, how can we mold our system around you or around these group of players that come in through the portal? That's what Mike Woodson and this staff need to look for because that should make your job easier. That's what the portal is there for. No, you don't want to live in it and you don't want to build your program on it. But as of right now, since our high school recruiting is in the dumpster, we at least got to go to the portal and that could save his job. And if you bring in the right guys and the right group of them and they mold well together and you formulate your plan around those guys, we could be a dangerous team next year. Of all the guys we've talked about, you start bringing some of those in and this roster starts to look pretty good. And that'll take off some pressure of them. And here's the bottom line, okay? While some of you don't want Mike Woodson here, and some of you do, some of you may not want to see him coach another game, and some of you don't want to see a coach be fired again. That's the bottom line, is a coaching change and a coaching search hurts a program tremendously. There's a reason that Indiana didn't want to pay him all that money to get him out. They didn't want to pay it, and they didn't want to go through it again. And I think they wanted to give him another chance because – when you fire a coach or a coach leaves or whatever, any of the recruits that were for him, they're gone. You got to go find somebody else. You got to go pay somebody else. And then you've got to start from the bottom all over again. We don't want to do that. And I'm not saying that that should be the lone reason that Mike Woodson should hang around forever. But if he wants to hang around longer, he has to make this a successful portal cycle. Has to. It's it's crucial. It's crucial. And between now and the start of the season, if guys don't start coming in and the right ones don't start coming in, I'll write off the season right here and now before we even get to May, before we get to June. Yeah, because that's how I feel about it. I think it's that important. And if Mike Woodson doesn't, and this coaching staff, it's not just on him, they have to be successful in the portal, getting a number of guys and a number of right guys. We've reached out to enough of them, and enough of them are coming on visits. Now it's time to lock it down. Well, coming up on Locked on Hoosiers, the Lady Hoosiers thought they may have lost their head coach, but she turned it down. We'll talk about that coming up in just a second on Locked on Hoosiers. Today's episode of Locked on Hoosiers is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all of that while making the process easy and intuitive. LinkedIn knows that, look, if you're a small business owner, you're wearing a ton of hats. You don't have time to go out and hire and go through all these interviews and, and, and interview people that aren't qualified for the job. LinkedIn helps you get rid of all of that. You can do it and post your job in just a couple of taps because two and a half small businesses are using LinkedIn for hiring right now. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back into Locked On Hoosiers. Appreciate you being here. Reminder that this show is always free, never behind a paywall, whether you're on audio, whether you're on video. Thank you so much for being here. You will never, ever have to pay for Locked On Hoosiers. Well, the Lady Hoosiers, as I mentioned, uh, were scared for a moment, right? For a moment about Terry Morin, who uh, is a legendary coach here in Bloomington right now. A lot of you I've seen in my comments and on social media have said she's the best coach at Indiana right now. And kind of hard to argue that, right? She's going to go down as one of the better coaches that Indiana basketball has ever seen, has ever had. Terry Morin is unbelievable. And she's so unbelievable that one of the biggest programs historically in the women's game of college basketball came after her. And they made her a job offer. And you got to respect it, got to honor it, right? You got to say, hey, I, I appreciate you coming after, right? It, can't hurt to ask, right? You never know till you ask. It's, a, it's that type of situation. And that's what happened with the Tennessee Lady Vols. They came, apparently had made an offer 
and uh, I guess had come in and were interested. Uh, but according to reports, Terry Morin turned down the job because they fired their coach, which that was a shock. A lot of people were were surprised by that. Um, and the fact that that job is open is it, truly unbelievable. Here's some of the numbers on Terry Morin. In the extension that she got last year for Indiana, she is the second highest paid women's basketball coach in the Big Ten and one of the highest in the nation. Morin was given a two-year extension through the 28-29 season with an annual compensation of more than $1.3 million. It also has a ton of performance bonuses and stuff like that. So for the coach that's been here going on 10 years, 226 wins, 99 losses. That's good for almost 70% in her 10 seasons at Indiana. Five straight NCAA tournament appearances, three Sweet 16s in the last four, and the first Big Ten regular season championship in four decades for Terry Morin. So, yeah, Tennessee would be dumb not to come after a coach like her. And there's a handful of coaches that I think have probably heard, I'm saying big time, like established coaches right now, have definitely heard from Tennessee. Because again, why would you not? Why not at least come and ask one of the greatest coaches in the game if you, if she wants to leave? If you, maybe they pay her more money. Maybe they bring in, I don't know. Who knows, right? You see this all the time in, in football and other college basketball and whatever sports you want to talk about. I mean, there's nothing wrong with going and asking the question, but I think it speaks volumes to a couple of things. I think it says that Terry Morin really likes it here in Bloomington. I think she really enjoys her time here. She is sort of solidified here. Indiana's not going to get rid of her, that's for sure. And job security is kind of a big deal, but I think she has everything she wants. Indiana has given her everything she needs to be successful. And I think she's been that. Now, you're still looking to get to the mountaintop, stay at the mountaintop type of thing, but look at the game of women's college basketball and how it has grown in the last, shoot, I don't even want to say five years. I think you could say in the last three years. Like, the, it's grown so much across the country, and I think coaches like Terry Morin are, are to help with that. I think players like McKenzie Holmes are because of that. Of course, you've got the Caitlin Clarks from Iowa and the Angel Reese's from LSU and the Beckers from UConn. Like you've got those types of players, but the game of women's basketball is just growing tremendously. And it's awesome to see. It's fantastic. And for us, we've always loved it because we're Indiana. That's how this state rolls. And we just care about more basketball than, than most other states do. So it's good to see that Terry Morin is not only doing her thing and, and had another good season, but is not going anywhere as of right now. And I think Hoosiers fans can kind of relax on that. I don't think it was ever a major threat. I don't think. Um, but to turn down a major job like Tennessee, the historical program that it is, it's a big deal, man. That's a really big deal. That's going to help Indiana in so many ways. I, I start thinking about, I start thinking about recruiting right? If you, like we were just talking about with Mike Woodson, if you lose your coach, man, it's, it's tough. It's tough. You have to, you got to start all over. You got to go find the next coach. You have to go pay the next coach. You have to bring them in, teach them the ways you hope that they have some sort of connection to a place like Indiana, right? To the state or to the area, to the school and, and understand what it is that we do here. And then you got to say, okay, Go recruit because your roster is gone. All your high school recruits, they're out. Half your roster, they dipped out in the transfer portal. And you just don't want to go through that, man. It's miserable. It's a horrible experience. And Indiana, at least on the women's side, not going through that right now because uh, Terry Morin, uh, according to reports, declined the Tennessee job. But to kind of circle back on that, think about if, if, if the men have to go through this again where it's like, okay, now that if if Mike Woodson is to get fired next year or let go or leave or whatever, right? Again, a lot of you wanted that this past year. But if it happens this next year, this time next year, if we're sitting here having this conversation about Mike Woodson no longer being the head coach at Indiana, then you have to start saying, okay, who do you get? 
You had to go find somebody. You could try to poach a T or a coach like Tennessee was trying to do with Terry Morin, or you go find an up-and-comer. You go find somebody um, who not a lot of people know about. Maybe you hire from within, but you're starting so far behind, especially in today's game where, sure, you could catch up a little bit because of the transfer portal, but you could also get even farther behind because – of the transfer portal. And because when a coach leaves, everybody dips out, everybody leaves. And it's it's understandable why that happens. I just don't want Indiana to have to go through that. We just saw it with football, could possibly see it with men's basketball, but I don't think uh, I don't think we're going to see it with women's basketball for the foreseeable future. And and look, coach of the year Last year in 22-23, I mean, Terry Morin is is one of the best coaches in the game of women's basketball. 26 wins this past year, uh, tied for second in the Big Ten regular season standings, number four seed in the tournament, which, again, we all disagree with, and lost to South Carolina in the Sweet 16. And, uh, again, the Hoosiers, they, 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 I can't get over it, man. I can't get over how... They should have been a higher seed than 16, but it is what it is. It's over now. But Terry Moran hanging out in Bloomington turns down the Tennessee job. She will be the coach. She's been here for a decade, and I think she's going to be here for a lot more as well. Coming up on our final segment on Locked on Hoosiers, the national championship game for the men is tonight. We'll talk about it. We've got uh, we've got some opinions. We've seen both of these squads. Yeah, we saw UConn in the non-conference schedule, and we saw Purdue twice in the conference schedule. We'll talk about that, make some picks, and relate it all back to Indiana coming up in our final segment on Locked on Hoosiers. Final segment here on the show. Appreciate you being here. If you're still here, like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you're on audio, you can uh, hit the bell so you never miss an episode of Locked on Hoosiers. National championship game for the men. It's crazy that we finally have gotten down to it for college basketball. The tournament's been insane. I mean, it's just been, it really has been unbelievable to watch this tournament. The Final Four was good. The Elite Eight. I mean, all the games were phenomenal. They really, really were in the NCAA tournament. on the men. And the women's has been great too, right? That's been phenomenal. But the men's championship is tonight, and it is UConn and Purdue. And us Hoosiers, we have a... A little bit of a unique perspective on this because we played UConn all the way back in the fourth game of the season, and then we played Purdue twice in the regular season, and we pretty much hate to see Purdue be good at anything. So go Huskies, right? Hopefully everybody is, has ordered their Husky t-shirts, Husky hats, and wearing it all proudly tonight during the national championship game, which, by the way, can we discuss why we're tipping this game off at whatever time and the fact that it's going to get over at midnight. I mean, it's like nine o'clock Eastern time that this game is going to start. It's unbelievable. It's ridiculous. Do they not know people have jobs and school and a life? Unbelievable. But you look back at the game against UConn, right? All the way back in November for us, Indiana played the number five team of the country, that UConn team. And it was a 77 to 57 loss where Renew had 18 points, Ware had eight rebounds, and just wasn't overall a great game. I think we started off okay, right? The halftime score was 37 to 30. I mean, Indiana was, we were in it, and then the second half happened, and it was it was a disaster. And we could see right then, back in November, that UConn was going to be a good team. I, I may have said on this show I don't know if they'll repeat, but they'll probably get pretty close. Well, here they are. And something that Dan Hurley's teams do phenomenally well, they get better as the year goes on. And guess what? That's what championship-level teams do. They get better each and every game, each and every week, and each and every month. And that's what UConn has done all season long. And I think Indiana gave them a fight in that game, I know it's it's hard to remember the stats from there, but you had Renew with 18, you had Ware with 11, and Galloway with 10. But here's the problem. Remember this? McKenzie and Baco had two. Xavier Johnson had four. Believe it or not, you actually had 13 points off the bench between Walker and C.J. Gunn, who, of course, are no longer at Indiana. But 
You just didn't get any scoring, man. That UConn defense was locked down on the inside. They gave Malik Renew and Khalil Ware all sorts of hell all day long. And UConn just asserted their dominance. And it was early in the season, and they were already that good. They were already that good. So I think UConn is the better team. They've been the best team for a long time. And our two games against Purdue for Indiana, we played them twice in the in the regular season schedule. And in the Big Ten, the first game was ugly, 87-66. to 66. That was here, remember. That was not fun at all, 87-66. And it was over by the first 20 minutes, really by about the first 10 or 15. I mean, it was just, it was a disaster. 51-29 at the half. And the problem with that one was, it was here. It was at Assembly Hall. Like, there was just nothing that could be done in that game because Zach Eady did his thing. And look, there continues to be discussions on whether he is good at basketball or not. That's that's ridiculous. He is good. Now, he's extremely tall, and that <laughs> that helps a lot. But he's still good at basketball. And I thought DJ Burns was going to give him a little bit more trouble than he did. Um, but when he played Indiana, talking about Zach Eady, 33 points on 11 of 23 and 11 of 12 from the free throw line at 14 total rebounds, we had nothing. We had no answer for him because Khalil Ware was shut down. But Mbako was your second leading scorer behind Trey Galloway because Renew couldn't do anything either. And and unfortunately, that was just a uh, – That was a beatdown in Bloomington, and we just had no answer there because turnovers killed us, bad shooting killed us, and Purdue took advantage of all of it, and they beat us 87-66 to in the first game of the season. Then we went to Purdue, and we thought, okay, maybe we'll play a little bit better, right? You remember when we were going to that game, we had lost to Penn State, but we had just beaten Ohio State on the road, so what could go wrong? How about 79-59? It was another beat down. Purdue was up by 12 at the half, and they just continued to do it in the second half as well. And you want to know the problem in this game? The problem in this game? Do you remember who the leading scorer was? Second game against Purdue in the regular season. Do you remember who the leading scorer was for this Indiana team? Oh, back on February 10th? It was C.J. Gunn off the bench with 13. 13 points from C.J. Gunn led all your scores. Mbako had 12. Ware had 11. Galloway had 10. Renew had 6. And Walker had 6. How in the world do you expect to win a basketball game with your backup, backup, backup point guard or backup, backup shooting guard, whatever the heck you wanted to call him, comes in and scores 13 off the bench? Unacceptable. Edie. Oh, he had a worse night, 26 points and 13 rebounds. Shocker. And then Smith had 19. And they didn't do anything crazy in that game. I felt like we were in that game more than we were the one in Bloomington, which is so insane, but it's true. I say all that to say this. We've got insights on these two teams. And watching this game tonight, I know this won't be the first time you're watching them since we played them, but we understand how these two teams want to roll. They're going to pack the paint. They're going to get to the line. They're going to throw it off the glass. They're going to get offensive rebounds, and they're going to try and give themselves two and three possessions or two or three shots on each possession. I think it comes down to better shooting and lack of turnovers. And you know what? UConn's the best team in the country. They're the best team in the country. They're about to do something that has not been done in a long, long time in college basketball. I'm taking UConn to repeat. I think UConn beats Purdue. God, I hope they beat Purdue, and I know you do as well. UConn will beat Purdue in the national championship game tonight. The Huskies are going to repeat, and Purdue, they're going to fall short. Darn, we do hate to see that. That's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Hoosiers. I appreciate you being here, making this your first listen each and every day. If you're on the audio, if you can subscribe on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, wherever you listen, be sure to do that. Turn on notifications so you don't miss an episode. If you're on YouTube, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Takes two taps, one each. It's free. It's easy. Helps us grow. We're pushing towards 2,100 subscribers. Make sure this is in your rotation. Make this your first listen each and every day. Become one of our everydayers. We're having a lot of fun. I'm trying to get better and engaging with you guys in the comments. I'm having a lot of fun doing that, so be sure you drop those below as well. We'll be back tomorrow, Hoosier fans. Until then, stay safe. I'll talk to you later.